Well, Payam Akavan is a former UN war crimes prosecutor and he's working on a petition to send to the UN Security Council and to The Hague to look into cases of crimes against humanity in Iran. And we've reached him on the line in New York. Thank you very much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Could you detail for us what you consider to be crimes against humanity this past week in Iran? Well, crimes against humanity are widespread or systematic, uh, large-scale human rights abuses, uh, such as uh, murder, torture, uh, unlawful imprisonment, disappearances. Um, and uh, while the extent of the atrocities that have been committed in the past few days is difficult to ascertain because the um, Iranian uh, hardliners have, have uh, basically kicked out all the journalists uh, from Iran or, or prevented them from moving about, uh, we're receiving daily reports uh, indicating uh, that many uh, innocent uh, protesters, peaceful protesters, um, have been uh, killed in the streets of Tehran and other cities. Um, uh, many uh, have been rounded up and brought to the notorious uh, torture chambers of Evin prison and, and other detention facilities in the country. In certain cases, uh, we have evidence that uh, the uh, besieged militia have gone to hospitals where injured people have been taken and doctors to sign death certificates uh, for people who are then taken away uh, uh, to uh, undisclosed locations. Um, and when you look at the record of the regime um, uh, in terms of the brutality with which it has treated dissent uh, previously, uh, and the fact that the hardliners are now fighting for the very survival, um, I think that it is reasonable to say that uh, uh, there, there is a serious ground for concern that there have been large-scale human rights abuses already, and that if the situation is not dealt with appropriately, that this will only uh, uh, the situation will only become worse. We are getting reports in now on the news wires of Iranian state radio saying that 457 people have been arrested in Tehran clashes. But do you think there's much appetite amongst the international community to try Iran for crimes against humanity? Well, the international community um, has to has a choice to deal with this issue either based on uh, principles of international law or to simply see it as a contest for power. This issue here is not about uh, a contest for power between President Ahmadinejad and, and uh, Mr. Mihosin Musavi. It is a contest between the hardliners and the Iranian people. The millions of people pouring out in the streets of Iran aren't simply supporters of uh, one particular candidate. They are people who represent the women's movement, the labor movement, the student movement, people who are profoundly uh, frustrated and angry at 30 years of uh, tyranny and, and, and repression and corruption and decline. And when the uh, uh, security apparatus of the state is sent out into the streets to start uh, savagely beating and, and murdering innocent protesters, uh, then the international community has to ask itself uh, whether it wants to take a side with the Iranian people or the very small minority of hardliners that are trying to repress the masses uh, to, to preserve their own power. And we have learned from the case of uh, the former Yugoslavia, where uh, Slobodan Milosevic was arrested and other such situations, that until people who are resorting to violence as an instrument of power, until they are held accountable, mm. there can be no long-term peace and stability. The only ingredient for peace and stability in Iran is if those who are committing these atrocities are held accountable. Okay, Payam Akavan, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much for joining us from New York.